the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 13, entitled Dhritarashtra Quits Home, text number 60. Iti, Uttva, 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 Aruha, Aruhat, Svargam, Svargam, Narada, Narada, Of his, of his. Of his. keeping in the heart, keeping, keeping in, in the, the heart. heart. Ajahat gave up, gave up. Shuchaha, Shuchaha. all lamentations, all lamentations. Having spoken thus, the great sage Narada, along with his Veena, ascended into outer space. Yudhisthira kept his instruction in his heart and so was able to get rid of all lamentations. Purport by the Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Sri Narada is an eternal spaceman. Having been endowed with a spiritual body by the grace of the Lord. He can travel in the outer spaces of both the material and spiritual worlds without restriction and can approach any planet 
in unlimited space within no time. We have already discussed this previous life as the son of a maidservant. Because of his association with pure devotees, he was elevated to the position of an eternal spaceman, and thus had freedom of movement. One should therefore try to follow in the footsteps of Narada Muni and not make a futile effort to reach other planets by mechanical means. Maharaj Yudhisthira was a pious king, and therefore he could see Narada Muni occasionally. Anyone who desires to see Narada Muni must first be pious and follow in the footsteps of Narada Muni. Translation again, I'll say, you please repeat. Having spoken thus, having spoken the thus, great sage Narada, the great sage Narada, along with his vina, along with his vina, ascended into outer space, ascended into outer, outer space, Yudhisthira, Yudhisthira, kept his instruction, kept his instruction, in his heart, in his heart, so was able to get rid of all lamentations, so was able to get rid of all lamentations. Om we were born in the darkness of ignorance, but our spiritual master has kindly for us opened our eyes to the torchlight of knowledge, therefore we offer our most humble and respectful basis of this lotus feet, the Maum, Vishnupadai, Vishnupastai, Bhutale, Shimadev, Akhivedanta. Swami Tiramane, Namaste, Sadaswati Devi, Bodhavani, Kucharane, Sesha Sunyaman, Paskutu, Sutorane, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Kamunikananda, Tere Devara, Sivasadi Gauravatarana, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purports of the first gift. <laughs> Thirteen chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled Vijayarasa Quits Home. Haribo. Haribo. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> Hare Krishna. I do have a question about Narada Muni. <laughs> Not now. <laughs> so, this verse concludes this wonderful chapter, Dhritarasa quits home. And the last dozen verses or so uh, were the instructions of Narada Muni uh, to all of us, but in the text is the Maharaj Yudhisthira, who was suffering from lamentation, not knowing the whereabouts of his uncle, Dhritarashtra, his aunt, Gandhari, and his other uncle, Vidura. And what is amazing is that Yudhisthira, Yudhisthira, even though he was mistreated in such a horrific fashion by Dhritarashtra's compliance with his evil-minded son, Duryodhana's plots to get rid of them. He didn't think of them. He didn't think about the bad things that happened in that relationship. He's simply thinking how much affection and love and care that Dhritarashtra took care of when they were when his father Pandu, uh, you know, left this world, they were homeless, they were orphans. And they came. There's some pictures in the Mahamarta shows Kunti <laughs> um, walking in with the boys, uh, walking in, they, they, were, they were basically living in the 
woods. The Rapanda Jones say when they, they walked into the city for shelter. And there at that time they were very warmly welcomed by the whole palace. They became part of the family initially and got shelter. So this is what he remembers. He doesn't remember all the intrigue. And this is the sign that he's a pure devotee. Pure devotee sees everything as Krishna's arrangement. And therefore, the symptom, well, what is it? It says that Maharaj Yudhisthira, he, he never had an enemy, right? What is it? There was a, there's a Sanskrit word. Do you remember the name of <laughs> Anyway, Yudhisthira, no enemy of his was ever born. Ajata Shastra? Yeah, Ajata And so, and you know, of course, pure devotees, this is the way they see. Like Prahlad Maharaj, he never saw, even though he was sent to the school to see <laughs> enemies and friends, uh, he, he did not see that. He, he didn't see anyone as his enemy and his friend. Even his own father, who was trying to kill him, did not see him as his enemy. He saw, I'm simply dependent on Krishna. Krishna is my protector. Krishna's my father, Krishna's my mother, Krishna's my life and soul. This is the devotee doesn't see things happening to him by people. This was, of course, explained very nicely one time to uh, our good friend Peter Burwash, who used to come here every year. He'd probably tell the same story every year. <laughs> and it was so deep in understanding of, of how to, uh, the Prabhupada, instruction Prabhupada gave him was kept within his heart forever. He, he became such a you know, glorious personality. What happened was, he was just, he was, of course, he's still not initiated, but, you know, he came, he was coming in the early days to the movement and was quite attracted by the devotees and by Prabhupada. And, and because he was a businessman, he gave money. He gave money to the temple well, through the devotees. Why temple? Money. And somehow or other, those devotees misused it. Not only did they misuse it, but they took that money to leave the movement. So you can imagine, he gave thousands of dollars, and it became spoiled. So he was agitated with a good mind, with a good reason. At least from our from our earthly perspective. I was wondering how to deal with it. By that time, the problem came. He went to see the problem. The problem listened to the whole story. The problem said, you should never become angry with the instruments of your karma. Mm -hmm. He didn't chastise, you know, the devotees who did this misdeeds of it. You know, he just tried to put it in a different light that actually everything happens for a reason. The way we're treated, what we go through, this is all happening by Krishna's arrangement for our purification. If we see that, then we are Krishna conscious. If we see the person, if we become angry or hateful or critical of the <laughs> We all have agents of our karma. We all have instruments of our karma, right? Because things are always happening to us. Huh? We're always getting mistreated. Right? Maybe not by some situation we might... But ultimately we're going to be mistreated by... <laughs> in the form of disease, in the form of you know, some kind of suffering. And now people are suffering. We all are aware of another hurricane, another disaster. If you, if you show the pictures of Bahamas. We go to Bahamas. I went to Bahamas a couple of times. One, when Radha Swami was there, and once when he was supposed to come, he didn't, he didn't come. And he was ill for kata and everything, or people go to Bahamas for 
a dog shot in the ocean. <laughs> but anyway, what happened, was, I mean, it shows the pictures. Just complete, you know, the whole thing devastated. So, you know, how to, that's a, that's a form of mistreatment, right? Not like some terrorist came and blew up their houses. Material nature dishes it out. So how to be grateful, or how to be thankful, or how to at least understand sarva karma karma, that Krishna is the cause of all causes. In those, in, the, in any situation, you know. And we see one after another, uh, at least from my perspective, we see my god brothers one after another. We're all, we're all in the last. We're all in the last stages of our Prabhupada's followers. Disciples are in the last stages of their, of their ability to contribute uh, to, you know, the mood, to, 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 the, to the society to, to, because of old age, you know, one, one after another. So I was thinking of that this morning about Monty, the other last class I attended, Monty mentioned about Ram Das, Abhi Ram Das, who was just like a having a normal day. Boom. You know, he was hit with some weird kind of death blow. I mean, he died. I mean, practically. So this is, you know, more on our minds how <clears throat> what kind of offering we want to make to Guru and Krishna. Of course, this is a, this is a situation at anywhere for everyone at every moment. But, you know, old age is actually a, 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 a blessing if we take it to become serious in Christian consciousness. Uh, and this is, of course, what uh, Vidura, he went and preached to Dhritarashtra. <laughs> hey, you're old, your liver's failing, your, your body is shaking, you know, so and so, he gave all a, it's time to, you know, and you're, and, you're, and you're taking charity from the homes of the people who are trying to kill. You know, wake up. You know, wake up. And of course, he was in illusion. And now he, she was, and, and he was, he was awake. He was in illusion. And he was awakened by a devotee, Madura, pure devotee, you know, of Krishna. Who is in full knowledge, and of course he gained a lot of his realizations and uh, expertise in preaching in the association of another devotee, Maitreya Muni. When he went on pilgrimage, you got to understand also his story. Vidura was chastised, right? He was chastised by Duryodhana. And it was, the words were so painful, you know. The words were so painful to his heart. By his own uh, nephew, right? Nephew? Kind of nephewish, <laughs> somewhere along step. But anyway, he was chastised by someone that he expected affection from. And it, it, it hurt his heart so bad that he just left. And sometimes that happens to us. We get hurt so bad we just want to be away from it all. <laughs> you know, <laughs> go to the woods or go to you know, different place and try to forget that hurt. But that hurt stays in the heart. So what did he do? What was his remedy? He went and associated with devotees, another pure devotee, Maitreya Muni. He had the association with Maitreya Muni, you know, the whole section of Bhagavatam. Well, Maitreya Muni is giving him spiritual knowledge, lifting him off that platform of lamentation, right? The platform of lamentation. This world is lamentable. What that Prabhupada described in the material world is an ocean of tears. Huh? So many good reasons to cry. Actually, <laughs> we should be crying at every moment. If we actually look at what's happening. You know, and that's the first quality of a spiritual personality is they feel compassion. They're not crying necessarily. Sometimes they do. There's a story of Prabhupada standing on the veranda in Mayapur, right? He's looking over the veranda. This is the early days. And he saw children 
my poor Basis children fighting with the dogs for the trash that was thrown out, mm. the, the food trash that people eat, the plates that you know, little from little, little slurps. Uh, they saw children hungry fighting with the dogs for something to eat. And the body that was with Prabhupada, he noticed tear, tears, were, tears were coming out of the corner of Prabhupada's eyes. He was feeling compassion. And that's how the whole, from that point, from that point of compassion, Prabhupada initiated the Food for Life program, or the Prasadam distribution program, started in Mayapur. Now the Food for Life is all over the world. It's even here at Nubradava. We're feeding people free twice a day, right in front of our restaurant where we're trying to make money. It's inconceivable, but it's Prabhupada's heart. It's pounding. <laughs> Prabhupada's heart is pounding. And where somebody's, you know, management, devotees over the years have, have understood this is Prabhupada's desire. Even if we can say, oh, these people aren't hungry. Into well to do people. It doesn't matter. One time Prabhupada was challenged, why don't you preach to the you know, why don't you help the poor people? Prabhupada said everyone's poor. <laughs> <laughs> the rich people are poor. They don't have knowledge of Krishna. <laughs> right? So indiscriminate mercy. We're explaining mercy. Yesterday, in our, in our wood gathering <laughs> marathon, uh, firewood. But we were talking how mercy is something you don't deserve. You know, mercy. You don't deserve my mercy when you get when you get convicted of a crime. You know, you go if you you know you go to the judge and you please, please be merciful. I got a family to maintain. I got, I got, I got my children are young. And, Whatever. You're begging. No, you did this. You actually deserve this. But the judge is merciful. He gives you a lighter sentence. So in the same way, this is what chanting Hare Krishna is all about. Chanting Hare Krishna it means begging for mercy. From our position, if we actually take stock of our own position, why are we in this material world? Krishna explains this in the Bhagavad Gita. We're overcome by the duality of desire and hate. You know, we're, we're, we're contaminated. And we've led a whole life, not just one life, many lives of forgetting Krishna, acting just for our sense gratification. And maybe even adopting foul means to live. Somewhere along the line, we're here, it's a mature world. Deva Rikaswami used to say, look in the mirror. If you see a material body, you know somewhere along the line you made a mistake. <laughs> because by nature, we are spirit soul. We are pure spirit soul. Part and parcel of Krishna. Loving Krishna. Eternal. Loving relationship with him. And perfection. This is it. But somehow or another, we're here in this material world. So we have to beg for mercy in this material world. We deserve worse. This is the psychological solution in the Bhagavatam. A devotee was a devotee friend of mine in prison. He, uh, he was begging for me to remember the verse where Krishna says, the first installment of my mercy. You know, you know this one? Yes, you know, the, the, whatever. <laughs> I'm not saying But anyway, uh, the first installment of my mercy from a devotee is that I take everything away. Mm -hmm. If you depend, it will depend on me. You know. Um, and such a devotee, if you see like that, again, instruments of karma. If you see like that, that, oh, Krishna's taking everything away, uh, it's not something to get angry about. It's something to rejoice. Oh, Krishna's so kind. 
He's showing me his mercy. So you're chanting Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Ram. Hare Ram. Ram Ram. Hare Hare. It has to be done in the mood of begging mercy. Unfortunately, we become, because it's, it's, a, it's, it's a lot of chanting. <laughs> and our attention span is very small. This is one quality in Kali Yuga, right? Manda Samanda Matayo, Manda Bhagya. We are very unfortunate, unlucky, always disturbed. Inability to concentrate is a, is a symptom of Kali Yuga. So we can't concentrate, we can't think, we can't feel. We should know that when we're chanting, it's a call for mercy. And to the degree that we're attentive to the calling out for mercy, this is the degree that, just like if somebody came in here and tried to take one of the devotees out, kidnap one of the devotees, kidnap Josh, and we just sit here and say, hey, please don't do that. Please help. <laughs> no, stop it, stop it. We have to stop, you know, we have to make a, make a sincere you know, call. So we have to be sincerely calling out, Krishna, please, give us some mercy. And what is the mercy? What is the mercy we're calling for, Bhakti Brelin? What is it? What do we want? When we're chanting, what do you want? What do we want? Huh? Huh? What do we want? Service. We want service. We want to be engaged in the service. So Narada Muni, what a devotee. So he came, okay, so getting back to the point. So, so Yudhisthira is lamenting. Everyone's lamenting. <laughs> you know, yeah. Vitarasta, you know, then, then you had, you know, um, the Dura lamenting. And he gets treated by my trade. But now we have Yudhisthira lamenting. And Narada Muni, Narada Muni, he comes, he shows up. He shows up to give um, spiritual knowledge, his whole last 12 verses or whatever. He's speaking spiritual knowledge. There's no reason to lament. This material body is a temporary thing. He goes on and on. Very nice instructions here. And, uh, and then he gives a prediction. He gives a prediction. Because he's wondering, he's just wondering, where is my uncle? And then he gives a prediction. He says, oh, in five days from now, they will leave this world body self, self, what's it called? Self-emulating? <laughs> Emul emulsion, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> what is the word? Well, his body would start on fire by itself. There's a heat in the body. If you're a yogi, you can take the heat that's inside the body that digests food and Emulsion, what is it? Combustion. 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 It's self-combustion, okay. Whatever. And it could burn your whole body. You wouldn't even, no need for a funeral pyre. If you're, mm -hmm. You could do it if you're a yogi. You know? So, of course, Chitrasa was encouraged to perform this kind of yoga where he raised up his life air, burst out of his head, becomes totally detached from his body, and then psh, burned the body up. And then when his body was burning, Anyway, he's predicting this. It didn't happen yet. This is because Narada Muni is tree Kalagyal. He can see past, present, and future. Not only can he see past, present, and future, but he can show up as past, present, and future. Narada Muni was, is, the guru of so many. Right? Uh, Prahlad Maharaj, Guru Maharaj, um, uh, Author of Ramayan, Balbiki Muni, McGrawry the Hunter. <laughs> McGrawry the Hunter was a kind of a hunter. We have hunters in our neighborhood there. We have our deers. They're very dear to the devotees. <laughs> and if you don't know, any, if you know anything about deer, deer are the same deer in the same neighborhood. They don't travel around much. They stay in the same neighborhood. It's like we have this albino deer in our neighborhood. Been there, doesn't leave. It stays, and every day my wife is feeding cows to the deers, and it's the same deer. They just stay in their own territory, you know. How do we get on this? Oh, deer. Oh, anyway, so he was a hunter. Hunters are killing the deer, you know. So luckily they stay within, you know, 
they stay within a certain. So the ones that travel out, they're more, they're more. But anyway, this Hunter McGrary, he was kind of a hunter. He not only was hunting to kill, but his program was he would half kill. He was trained by his father that the most fun thing to do is to torture people, torture animals, actually torture animals. They'd half kill them and they'd be, you know, suffering and then finally he would take their skins at the end after. So not only was walking through the forest and he saw all these half killed animals, they're all torturing and they all got arrows and I mean, what's going on? So now the came upon McGrary. What are you doing? I'm hunting, I'm a hunter, that's who I am, I'm a hunter. This is how I live, this is how I make my living. By the way, you look poor, do you want some nice skins and I'm just a deer skin, a tiger skin I have to offer you? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just, I'm just inquiring what you're doing. I says, I understand you're a hunter, you need to live, but why are you just half killing these animals? He says, well, this is what I, this is what I know, this is what I, this is what I was trained by my father, he taught me how to do this. I'm just following what he told me. That's why I was thinking sometimes, you know, you see people just in line. The other day I saw a McDonald's wrapper by the palace. <laughs> why do people, you know, and I was thinking sometimes, why are people just, don't they know anything? They're just eating. Well, it's because of what they've been trained. Their father, mother, they're eating. They don't even think what it, what, you know, so unconscious. So anyway, he was unconscious. He was just following what he, but an artist, an artist said, listen, I'll tell you what. Do me a favor, you know. Just whatever you do, don't half kill them. Be merciful to them. Kill them. And then, if you and while you're doing that, by the way, you should chant this mantra: Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Hare. And so he said, okay. So he started doing that. And don't worry about your maintenance; it will come. But anyway, at a certain point, Narada said, "Listen, what you're doing is is." Is maybe before that, right? right before that, he told him, Yeah, what you're doing is, the, is great sinful reaction. Do you know what karma is? You no, know what is karma? It's like people today. You know? yeah, so, you know what karma is? I don't know. So, yeah, do you know what karma is? He said, ah. No. He says, Here, let me show you. Narada Muni, by his mystic power, he created a like, a, like a big screen TV in the sky. He said, Look at that. And there, McGrary could see all the animals that he had half killed and killed, they came back to life. And they were taking the spears and like jabbing him over, 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 and he couldn't stop it. This was the vision that Narada Muni was giving him. Because mm -hmm. Narada Muni had, he treated Kali guy. He could see, yeah, if you don't stop your activities, this is.